So the hinges are made out of some extra heavy two inch pipe. They have a seven eight inner diameter and with just a slight bit of work on a lathe, we're able to fit a seven eighths bolt perfectly. So I got some grade eight bolts. And then as you can see, here's the hinge bracketry. And those are made out of four inch half inch plate. Um, kept it nice and simple. So I'm just cutting the crane arm right now out of two by two quarter inch and I'm using the LS 1800 miter bandsaw, one of the few bandsaws still made here in America, which is um, incredible. Um, very good piece of equipment. It miters in both directions, so that can really help you out in certain applications. All the drawings for the jib crane were done in Fusion 360. I usually do kind of rudimentary drawings, but um, it's super helpful to get all of the exact angles for all of the cutting. And with, in combination with the Ellis bandsaw, you can see we're able to achieve very high accuracy in the cuts. Here we're doing bevels on everything. I'm using my 2 by 72 inch belt grinder. That's variable speed for doing a lot of the beveling. Right here you can see I have the stop set up. That's an add-on to the Ellis saw, um, which works out extremely well when you're doing repeated cutting. And those, these are the hinge bracketry right now that's being cut. You can see right here is this is how the hinge is going to look. I like to often take um, at the plates and make a stack when I'm going to drill a hole that's all the same to um, keep them all consistent. I'll tack weld them together as you can see I'm doing right now. And then I'm able to drill one hole through the entire stack of them and it will keep the um, tolerances between them extremely close. So you can see right here, we're just putting an X on it to find the center point. And then we'll use the center punch, um, mark that, and then we're going to drill our hole all the way up to a 7 8 inch drill bit. Um, this drill is something around a horse and a half motor, and it really doesn't like much above a half inch drill bit. So going all the way up to the 7 8 it really didn't like it very much, but um, was able to do it, taking it nice and slow. So once the hole is completed all the way through, we're grinding off the welds that we just put on, the tack welds, and now we're assembling the hinges. It's um, useful to put in some heavy washers to keep um, everything um, turning and being able to sm um, swivel smoothly, and also if you had to replace some parts later, likely replacing the washers would make a big difference in the wear. Of course, once the crane is assembled, you can use an abrasive polishing compound on all of the, the bracketry, so like the bolt and the pivot point. And so as you use the crane, it will polish it and start wearing into the metal a bit. And then after some use, you can take it apart, clean it, and then grease it, and you'll have a much smoother a longer lasting overall product that won't wear as much because it's been polished smoother so then there's less um, abrasion going on later once it is greased. You can see we're getting some welds on the hinge bracketry. So now we're getting the actual crane arm tacked up. I'm using a Tweco Fabricator 252i welding machine. I um, happen to be using 030 
welding wire. Normally you'd probably use 035 on something about this thickness, but I happen to have a spool of 030. Of course I'm putting bevels on everything, and these are double V-groove bevels for the most part, and I'm leaving a pretty small land, about a 16th to a 32nd, and so it ensures even with the finer wire it should be getting full penetration. Of course not having a root opening can cause um, there to be places without full penetration, but leaving a root opening can often as well cause a little more distortion in the parts. For shielding gas, I'm just using straight CO2. I find that I can usually put down about 70 or more pounds of metal on a single tank. It costs much less than mixed gas. It gives you more penetration, and I prefer how the welds... Um, go in and lay down. The only main disadvantage is there is more spatter and that for some people is one of the reasons I guess they don't use it. You definitely have a little bit smoother of an arc with um, a mixed gas but it tends to cost a whole lot more. Also I'm able to run at somewhere around 5 to 7 CFM which is very low for MIG welding and partly is due to the special new Tweco designed um, MIG gun that needs much less shielding gas to be able to do the same welding. So that also saves a lot of money in the long run. So here you can see the second pass, which is also the cover pass. And I'm doing pretty much a Z weave across there, um, pretty much like you would do on pipe or I guess structural stuff to a certain extent and um, you see how that's laying in there pretty well trying to make sure that I fill in the toe lines well but not stick around too long to build things up of course you want to always stay on the leading edge of the puddle um, if you just push the metal forward you potentially won't get any penetration MIG welding is one of those things you can lay down a bead that looks amazing that has like no strength if not done correctly so you always, always, always want to make sure you're staying on the leading edge of your puddle. And that's why it's extremely important to have done a lot of bend tests with MIG welding. With some of the other weld processes like stick welding, it's a lot easier to tell if your weld isn't coming out well and your parameters are off just visually. Here you can see this one came out really well. I was able to um, pause just long enough on the... Um, toe lines of the base metal on each side so that it's filled in nicely and I'm not getting any undercut and I'm also um, not overfilling it just keeping it just slightly above flush how it should be. I'm doing a z-weave working my way across and making sure I'm staying of course on the leading edge of the puddle and this one I'm very happy with how it came out. Occasionally you get a bit distracted setting up the camera and all for for all the welding so it's a little more challenging to get really good welds but you can see brushing it up how it came out really nice. Here you can see that I got some clamps and an angle iron to hold the pieces of heavy pipe um, that are the hinges per, um, parallel and straight and we're getting them tacked up of course and there is going to be a whole lot of multi passes to get these filled out. I am using a 70 um, S-6 I believe it is filler metal so it should have a minimum of 70,000 pounds of strength per square inch so with the passes done correctly and um, good penetration and fusion on everything, it should definitely be extremely strong, which would be really important since this will definitely carry a lot of load and we definitely don't want those to break off. So for the installation of the jib crane, I'm just going to assemble everything and we're going to lift it in place and put on some of the heavy duty clamps that are advertised as 1,600 pound capacity that Harbor Freight sells. Those have worked out really well. I'm utilizing an Everlast um, inverter welding machine that isn't particularly meant for 6010 and so I'm doing the first pass in 6010 but it's stuttering quite a bit. I was also had like a 150 foot extension cord so they definitely don't like that. It runs really well on 7018 but um, definitely was having a, a little bit of complaints with the 6010 stuttering quite a bit but um, still came out incredibly well. Right here you can see I'm adding an extra arm. It's just a piece of thin gauge square tubing with a piece of um, also light tubing on there as the handle. And you can see I'm able to swivel the crane arm in and out, which is super convenient to move the load in and out. Um, otherwise it would be hard to push the crane arm back out and pull it 
back in conveniently and it's always amazing when your design works out like perfectly and after now using the crane for quite some time everyone has found it amazing and we're just throwing on some red oxide primer here which is my favorite um, for keeping the metal from rusting I threw on a thousand pound hoist that I had laying around. I believe this one's from Northern Tool, but it's pretty much the same as what Harbor Freight carries now. And they tend to work pretty well. We did have actually some problem in the transmission a while ago, and they had to change, I think, a bunch of bushings inside of it. Um, so that was kind of a pain. But overall, um, these little hoists work really well. There are, of course, two main varieties of jib cranes, the like freestanding ones that have their own post and their own foundation, which often requires a huge foundation um, to be able to support all the loads, and the post also needs to be very substantial. Uh, and in this application, we're using an existing structure that supports the top of the post, and you're able to get away with a much smaller set setup and still achieve a very similar thing, which comes out very economical. This one didn't end up costing too much to do, and it's able to um, increase productivity. The first crane I ended up making is a gantry crane that I've used um, a whole lot in the shop doing metal work, lifting heavy things in and out of vehicles. Um, but I did some modifications to it for construction. I added a piece of beam and a counterweight with a barrel that I can fill with water. And it's worked out really well, up to things probably three, 400 pounds. Um, technically, you could use a bigger counterweight and ensure your wheels and pivot points and all are done correctly. And you could lift a whole lot more. But this is a very simple design that has worked out incredibly well especially when you don't already have the existing structure to attach like a jib crane to. And so you're able to pull the load up and then just roll the entire crane back and lower the load down, and it works out really well. Having a crane like this can definitely save a lot of money over having a crane come out several times. If you enjoyed the content, remember to like and subscribe to Creativity Unleashed, and I will see you guys in the next one. You guys have a great day.